Hi, welcome to Prime Recap. Three colossal genetically modified beasts invade a city destroying everything and everyone they meet on their way. Today we will recap the story of the 2018 movie, Rampage. On an Energene space station, some scientists are conducting a gene editing experiment on laboratory mice, but something goes terribly wrong during the research and the little rodent turns into a giant bloodthirsty creature that kills almost the entire research team, leaving only one survivor. Since the space station will explode at any moment, the scientist goes to the lab and collects some samples to bring back to Earth, but as she is finishing collecting them, the mutant rat appears and starts chasing her. Luckily for the scientist, the rodent is hit by some small explosions, which gives her the chance to reach the escape capsule unharmed, but as soon as she reaches the escape device, the monster approaches and trying to reach her, starts scratching the hatch. As soon as she manages to get out of the spaceship with the samples, the researcher breathes a sigh of relief as she watches the huge explosion in space, but to her misfortune, the huge cloud of flames reaches the capsule and explodes the hatch that the rat had damaged, causing the woman to be charred while still alive. With the explosion, various debris enters the atmosphere and the three devices containing the collected samples, fall in different parts of the United States. One of the units falls into the primate ward of the San Diego Wildlife Sanctuary and is found by George, an albino gorilla who receives the care of Davis, a primatologist who has a great relationship with the animal. As soon as George touches that thing, a green smoke starts coming out of the sample and affects the gorilla in some way. One of the other two samples is found by a wolf and the third is devoured by a crocodile. As dawn breaks, Davis receives a call from the sanctuary about a problem with George, who has entered the bear's cage and after a brief struggle, has broken the largest terrestrial predator's neck like a toothpick. When Davis approaches him to try to calm him down, he realizes that the primate that was already quite large is almost a meter bigger than he was the day before. As soon as he manages to calm the injured animal, Davis is called on the radio to go to the gorilla area, where he finds several charred bamboos and a crater on the ground with a sample in the center. Not knowing what it is, the man collects the object and delivers it to the sanctuary's research department, while helping to get George into isolation. After doing some tests on the animal, the results show immense levels of growth hormone and several other alterations, which in a normal situation, would have already taken the big gorilla to death. The results point out that the animal doubled its weight. Suspicious that there may be an error in the result, Davis asks them to redo the tests, but the employee in charge of performing the procedure says that he has already done it three times and that the mutation rates get higher with each new sample. At Energene's office, Claire, who is one of the owners of the company, desperately wants to recover the samples, and to do so, hires Burke's team of mercenaries to go and investigate the places where the meteorological department recorded the impacts of space objects. As soon as they arrive on the scene, the men find the sample destroyed and an entire pack of wolves on the ground already lifeless. When they report this to Claire, she immediately assumes that one of the animals has been contaminated by the pathogen and asks Burke to bring the creature back, dead or alive. As they fly over the forest looking for the animal, the mercenaries spot a huge and extremely fast wolf running through the trees. Burke then shoots at the mutant animal and believing he has succeeded, the group lands the helicopter, but when they approach the place where the body should be, they find only a huge footprint on the ground. The men then get into formation as soon as they hear strange sounds in the bushes, but are reassured when they realize that it was only some deer running. At this moment one of the mercenaries wonders what frightened the animals, but has no time to reach a conclusion, the mutant dog comes up behind them and devours the man extremely quickly. In an attempt to survive, the mercenaries begin to shoot the giant creature, but are unable to do any damage. After the mutant wolf exterminates all of his cohorts, Burke asks the helicopter pilot to come to his rescue, but when the air team approaches, the demonic dog jumps into the aircraft to devour the crew, causing the driver to lose control and crash into the rocks. While reflecting on what the wolf has done to his team, Burke senses a presence behind him, but doesn't even have time to turn around, the animal devours his head while Claire and her brother Brett watch everything from the comfort of their company. From her home, Dr. Kate, a genetics expert, sees a news report on the news talking about debris from the Energene space station, which has fallen into the sanctuary and also about George's escape. Already wondering what this was about, the geneticist goes to the preservation area to talk to Davis about the device with the samples. Here we find out that she was one of Energene's scientists and was also responsible for the research that developed Rampage, a pathogen that left George this way. Kate then explains that while working at the company she helped develop a gene editing system to help cure diseases such as cancer, but when she found out that Claire and Brett wanted to use her experiments to make a biological weapon, she tried to stop them and was fired. While the scientist is explaining all this, George, who is starving because of his great growth, starts to become extremely aggressive and thanks to his enormous gain in strength, 
the gorilla manages to break the cell and escape from the sanctuary, destroying everything he finds on the way, while being chased by Davis and Kate. Outside the sanctuary, people panic at the sight of a gorilla that size running loose and call the authorities, who arrive shortly after. Seeing the police officers ready to shoot George, Davis asks them to put the guns down so he can calm the animal down. The officers comply, but suddenly a helicopter appears and shoots George several times with tranquilizer darts in the back, and thanks to the large amount of sedatives, he passes out in a few seconds. As expected, all this commotion caught the government's attention and so Davis and Kate were captured along with George to be flown to Washington. The primate expert notices that the gorilla's wounds, caused by the bear and the escape, have completely closed in a few hours, as if he had not suffered any damage. Besides being extremely powerful, these animals also have the incredible ability to regenerate. Right after the doctor explains about the regeneration caused by Rampage, a government agent named Russell shows up and Davis tries to convince him that releasing them is the best choice because Kate can get the cure from Energene, but the agent doesn't believe him. Just as dawn breaks, Brett and Claire discover that their former geneticist is with government agents and believe she is trying to turn them in. To prevent this from happening, the two siblings go to the top floor of the Energene building and turn on a transmitting device, which emits a low-frequency radio wave. This will attract the animals that have had contact with Rampage, who are the only ones who can hear the signal. Their plan is to make George uncomfortable and attracted to the wave, getting him agitated to the point where he ends up shooting down the plane and killing Kate in the process. After that, all they need to do is collect either George's or the wolf's DNA samples so they can get Rampage back. As soon as it begins to hear the signal, the demon wolf interrupts its meal of human flesh on a highway and runs toward the Energene building, which is in Chicago. On the plane, George, who was sleeping, is awakened by the radio wave and becomes quite enraged and agitated, to the point that he manages to free himself quite easily, but almost crushes Davis and Kate in the process. Seeing that huge beast on the loose, the military start shooting at the primate, but they are all squashed like insects. In the middle of all that shooting, one of the men fires a few shots at an explosives box, causing a big shockwave, which causes the plane to go into free fall. In the middle of all the commotion, George tries to catch Kate and Davis, but they drop one of the forklifts that was being transported in the aircraft on top of the gorilla, causing him to faint. With one less problem, Davis grabs some parachutes that were under the seats and hands one to Kate to jump out of the plane. Before leaving, the primatologist puts one of the parachutes on Russell, who was unconscious and jumps out of the aircraft along with the agent, who wakes up in the middle of the fall. When they reach the ground, the trio go to the wreckage of the plane to look for George and are unable to find him, which means that he survived the fall from almost 30,000 feet and also the blast from the impact. With no way out of there on foot, Russell calls for rescue and some military helicopters come to help them, taking them to an Air Force base where Davis discovers that George and the Wolf are heading together toward Chicago, something totally unusual in nature, as they would have killed each other already. Knowing this, Kate assumes that Energene has used bat DNA in gene editing and is emitting some kind of signal to attract them. She asks the colonel to evacuate Chicago to prevent millions of people from losing their lives when the animals arrive. However, the military man refuses and asks his men to detain them until the FBI arrives to conduct an interrogation. As they are being led away, Davis, who is a former military, manages to knock out the soldiers and along with Kate, goes to the medical helicopter where there is not much security. But as they are approaching, Russell appears behind them and hands them the key to the aircraft so they can fly to Energene and get the antidotes. At the Air Force base, the colonel uses a missile to try to shoot down the mutant animals and asks his troops to approach to confirm that the targets have been eliminated, but as soon as the military arrive on the scene, the pair of giants appear and start killing them one by one. With the failure of the operation, the colonel asks them to evacuate the city so that they can start a real war against these beasts, and Russell passes the information to the primatologist, but now it is too late, there will not be time for everyone to be evacuated. As soon as he arrives in Chicago, Davis is distracted by the military blockades and narrowly misses being hit by a tank that has been thrown by the animals, who have already arrived in the city and are doing massive damage. To make matters worse, the military manages to pick up an unidentified object in the river and believe it to be a submarine, but to their misfortune, it is that crocodile that devoured the sample in the swamp. It has now arrived in its final form completely gigantic. Realizing the risk to the entire United States with that reptile on the loose, the colonel asks his soldiers to prepare the fighters with the mother of all bombs to be dropped on Chicago and exterminate the mutant beasts before they destroy the entire city. Upon seeing the mutated crocodile, Davis immediately realizes that the military will not be able to stop it and speeds toward the Energene building. As soon as they land, the pair rush to the lab where they search for the antidotes for a few minutes, but just as they find them, Claire and Brett, 
who have seen them on camera, arrive in the research area and surrender Davis and Kate. Already knowing that they would want the cures, the geneticist tries to hide the antidotes in her coat, but Claire saw everything and asks the scientist to give her the antidote, Kate then gives them back, but keeps a vial hidden in her coat. When the brothers try to lead the pair out of the lab, Davis tries to resist, but is shot by Claire. With her companion unconscious, the geneticist is forced to accompany them to the helicopter. When they arrive at the helipad, however, George comes up behind them, attracted by the transmission tower. Afraid of being caught by the gorilla, Brett starts running to the first floor and as soon as he reaches the bottom floor he is met by Russell, who asks him for the laptop with all the company records in exchange for letting him leave the building freely. But to Brett's misfortune, as soon as he leaves the building, a large concrete block falls from the sky and hits him. At the helipad, Davis, who has regained consciousness, saves Kate from being crushed by the helicopter that George dropped on top of her. At that moment the geneticist shows the man that she has managed to save one of the antidotes and says that they could give it to the gorilla. With his aggression level lowered, George will be able to help deal with the other mutant animals. But since he is out of control, the primate is trying to climb the radio tower to destroy it and if they continue there they could be hit by the debris. Davis and Kate then run to find a safer place to wait for the opportunity to apply the cure on George, but as they are coming down the stairs, they are once again surrendered by Claire, who this time, wants them to distract the gorilla, while she flees the place. Davis then offers to be the distraction, but as he is walking back to the helicopter, he calls out to the gorilla. Taking advantage of the moment of distraction, Kate puts the vial with the cure in the businesswoman's purse and at that very moment, George, who heard Davis's scream, appears and grabs Claire with his giant hand, swallowing her up, knowing that it will take at least 10 minutes for the gorilla to be fully healed and that the other mutated animals are climbing the building that is about to fall, the duo runs to the helicopter that George damaged and decides to use it as a means to slow the speed of the fall. Something that miraculously works. When they reach the ground, Davis finds George and begins to calm him down. Apparently the antidote and the destruction of the radio tower have greatly decreased his aggression level, although he is not yet fully healed. Trying to save Chicago, the primate expert asks Kate to warn Russell that they can't drop the bomb there as there are still civilians and military in the city, while he and Jorge try to stop the other animals. When the creatures emerge from the rubble, a real decisive fight begins to take place, and when George is about to be killed by the giant wolf, Davis uses a grenade launcher to distract him, and when the beast advances toward the man, it falls right into the giant crocodile's mouth, which brutally rips off its head and devours it in one go. Taking advantage that the crocodile is distracted, George begins to hit it with the debris. But all he can do is get the creature's attention. Realizing that the gorilla could end up losing his life in this fight, Davis throws a grenade belt into the reptile, blasting it from the inside out, however the only thing the blast accomplishes is to make it pass out for a few seconds. Just as Davis is about to be crushed by the creature's tail, George manages to save his friend and guardian, but ends up being thrown into the rubble of a building, where a huge steel bar pierces his chest. The badly wounded gorilla manages to get the object off his body and tries to run away, but the crocodile bites his arm and throws him to the ground with absurd violence. Seeing his friend about to be killed, Davis runs to a wrecked helicopter and uses the machine gun and built-in missiles to try to kill the creature, but the creature's resistance is immense and it still manages to destroy the aircraft with a single bite, forcing the man to jump out of it to avoid being hit. When Davis is cornered and about to be killed, George jumps over the crocodile and to save his friend. He shoves the same rod that pierced his chest into the eye of the damn monster, hitting its brain, ending that creature once and for all. Seeing that they were no longer at risk, the colonel aborts the bomb launch and everyone celebrates the end of this great wave of total destruction. So, what did you think of this movie? Let us know in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.